Welcome, educators, parents, and scholar gamers, to the Academy of Esports episode 16. Interview with Mark Garvey Candela, Director of Strategic Partnerships at Twitch. I'm your host, James O'Hagan. This is the podcast where I delve into topics surrounding esports and education. Esports are organized competitive video games, allowing schools to redefine their athletic culture, diversify opportunities for student participation, promote physical and mental health, increase collegiate scholarship pathways, and play games. We cannot forget the importance of play. The mission of the Academy of Esports is to support these ideals. The vision of the Academy of Esports is for all students to experience the fun and joy of playing competitive video games. In this episode, I interview Mark Candela, Director of Strategic Partnerships at Twitch. In the esports world, he is more commonly known simply as Garvey. We talk about what is Twitch, how it is different than YouTube, and why schools should adopt Twitch as part of their esports programming and beyond. And with that, I give you my interview. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here with Mark Candela, also known as Garvey. He's the Director of Strategic Partnerships at Twitch. Garvey, thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and uh, Twitch is kind of a thing that a lot of people in my realm um, in education um, have heard about maybe or they may not have heard about it at all. Uh, some people may think, isn't that just a different YouTube? Um, really, I see it as a very different platform. Can you give us kind of a bit of an overview about what it is and what your role is with Twitch? Sure, absolutely. So Twitch is a live interactive and social platform, um, which means that um, everything is in real time. Um, you can speak to the broadcasters or content creators that you um, enjoy watching or you could speak to thousands of like-minded individuals in your own vernacular um, in real time. So it's really a difference between being a passive viewer and being an active viewer and having that social experience no matter where you are. Okay. So at, at Twitch, um, what I do is put together five-year programs for the company. Mm -hmm. um, so three years ago, I founded the Twitch student program and we grew it out to work in about 23 different countries now. It will scale out to about 50 countries by quarter two of 2019. And it's really just a way to um, work with students and provide knowledge, tools, and support to make sure they understand not only the gaming side of this industry, but how to practically apply their education to the business of this new digital world. So when you're talking about Twitch student, is that uh, a separate division? Is that something that uh, me as an educator needs to uh, connect in a special way? What how would I connect in to learn better, learn more, I guess, about Twitch Student? So we have an external portal. So it, it's a program. Mm -hmm. um, I'm part of the partnerships organization um, within Twitch. And our partnership department is really a, a differentiation point between other platforms. It's really a team of really passionate community members that understand the community, understand the, the content, um, live, eat, sleep, breathe it. Um, and we strive to understand the community's needs and the broadcaster's needs, um, because really at the end of the day, we built this platform to service an uh, underserviced community of gamers mm -hmm. um, back in 2011, of which we are a part of. So we support the community by creating tools, features, and products for the broadcasters to more deeply engage their community. Um, at the same time, we also provide products, tools, and support for the community to support the broadcasters. And it creates this um, synergy between broadcaster and the community. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what Partnerships really does is we want to identify how we can help, how can we understand more, how could we be of better service? Because the better content that's out, the more engaged the community is, the more engaged we are. And as you know, with Twitch and most of this industry, Everything's built on a free-to-play model. So on Twitch, it's free to watch, free to broadcast, free to do anything you want on the platform. But there's optional microtransactions built in for the broadcaster and the community to support each other mm -hmm. um, and, and um, be a part of a bigger community. So let's say I was a, a student advisor or a coach of an esports team at a high school or a school. Um, how would I, other than just getting started and what the resources, you, you started to bring up things about microtransactions and free to play, but there's got to be a way, because I've, I've heard of people who 
are able to monetize this. They make money off of this. They, uh, they, they, they get generate revenue from this. How does that work? How does that, how do I, as an educator look at that and go, gosh, can I make, can I make money for my school? Can I make money for my esports team? Or it doesn't necessarily even have to be an esports team. Could I, could I, any act school activities, things like that. Are there ways I can make money? Absolutely. So I think I put the cart before the horse. Sure. So, um, we have an external portal. It's twitch.tv forward slash p forward slash students okay and that is where our program lives and if you go to that it explains a bit about the program but most importantly there's a downloadable version of our twitch student handbook Mm -hmm. and our university challenge and a couple other little pieces of information there's an article that shares the vision of the program which is very very important Um, but the handbook's a great way to get started understanding the platform and then um, understanding what's available on the platform and even how to use it. So the handbook is in two levels, one's for students um, to help them get organized, to have their voice heard on this platform and to learn how to represent themselves by representing something bigger than themselves. So the first part's really just the creation of a school channel and a team page. A team page is an aggregated place for all the content at a university, and it's a way for the students to represent the university as a whole, Mm -hmm. right? So a team page will be something like um, University of Utah, and you'll go there and there'll be several channels on the team page that it's different students, different clubs, different kinds of content, whether it's educational, whether it's esports, um, whatever is most appropriate for the students in the university to live all in one place. And the team page is pretty cool because this is where the students can represent the university as a whole. Mm -hmm. So you could put these beautiful graphics on it, you could put links on it. So we asked the students to put pictures of their high school or university's beautiful campus, pictures of facilities they might be really proud of, pictures of student life, students enjoying themselves um, during their educational career. Then the links, we asked them to put links for the official school website, the registration page, Mm -hmm. anything that they think that our community might want to know about their university as a whole. And then, of course, the channels that are part of that team page becomes that individual student, program, or club's voice to this industry. And it's really a way to, one, represent the university or the high school as a whole, but it's also supposed to be a safe place for institutions to be represented to this community because the administrators control who is on the team page, Um, and can add and remove channels as appropriate for the messaging and the vision of the school and how they want to be represented. Then the second part is for administrators. Mm -hmm. Um, That addresses the problem of continuity. So as students graduate um, and student leaders graduate, we want to make sure that the program continues to grow and create opportunities for the students. So um, we would like a faculty advisor or an administrator to help with the transition of leadership, um, passwords, bank account information, That's when the items you had mentioned, the monetization, Mm. comes into play. So with an administrator on board, we'll offer a full partnership, which is very rare. We have 2.2 million broadcasters. We only only have 27,000 full partners. Hmm. So this is what we do is we offer a full partnership. We want to give everything we have to administrators and students. um, And that's where the monetization comes in. Now, you, you talk about, you know, you talked about this channel. Or excuse me, yeah, you can have the school channel with, or I'm sorry if I'm screwing up the terminology. I, I, I'm, team page. Team page, sorry. Made up of various channels. Right. Do, do all these channels have to be esports related, gaming related? What, what can these channels be? Absolutely not. So um, gaming to me is the medium, mm-hmm. and it's the medium that adds passion and vigor to the practical application of education in this new digital world. But there's so many exciting things I'm authorized to let universities and high schools do. Anything from traditional sports games to educational content, um, student-run workshops on how they're applying art to a digital medium, Mm. um, to the esports program, and do a workshop saying, okay, these are the tools and education that um, my school has provided for me. I'm going to use A, B, and C because of one, two, and three. And the next day might be the student actually creating the graphics, but explaining to our community in real time and answering questions on how to use Photoshop. Why is Photoshop used? Why is this software used? How do I use this? Um, so that's an example of educational content. And you could even do really cool things like, um, you know, universities have Freshers Week, right? Um, just came back from Caltopia is a good example. 30,000 students came through it. Mm-hmm. How about a guided tour of the campus or high school? 
um, by the students during, and introduce our community to the clubs, the facilities, have our community ask, oh, what is this statue for? What's housed in this building? Um, why is this here? Can you go to this club and ask this question? Um, what, what kind of curriculums do they offer in this new digital world? Things like that in real time, which would save you know students being curious about attending an educational institution. Now they don't have to jump in a plane um, or drive in a car to get this great guided tour. Okay, and and it sounds so. It sounds like while the platform was developed with gamers and the gaming community in mind, um, it is a very open platform that allows you to be creative on a variety of different levels. It sounds like much more than YouTube. I know that YouTube. I, you know you. I only say YouTube because I know that we've got to speak about the, you know, the most common platform. But this one seems a little more uh, open for socialization. I guess you could say. Absolutely, that's the heart and soul of the platform. Is that we're a social platform. Okay. Um, and it's it's live. So there's a a, a strong amount of authenticity involved mm -hmm. in live that curated content really can't capture. And we want to open the platform. We we built. The entire platform ourselves with the second largest content delivery network in the world um, and you're back and you're backed by Amazon which is you know that <laughs> you know that's a company that's 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 fairly well uh, secured I guess you could say oh absolutely and you know we we agree with the nine leadership principles of Jeff Bezos most importantly um, customer obsession mm -hmm. and I wouldn't say that we're so customer obsessed because we're part of the customers. We're part of the community. So what's good for the community is good for us. What's good for us is good for the community. Um, so we really like working with Amazon. We believe in the nine leadership principles. They align very closely with our core principles, our core values. Um, so it makes a very interesting match, especially when you have access to AWS. Yes. Um, it's it's really, really good. And for those of you who don't know what AWS is, that's, that's Amazon's cloud-based uh, services. So when you are looking to put a video out there or watch something, it's not running on one computer somewhere and can it handle the traffic. Pretty much Amazon handles a lot of server traffic throughout the world. They're one of the biggest providers of that service. So, you know, we're talking about a very robust system that you're getting access to free of charge. Right. So when we're talking about different content offerings, so Twitch was born of a a proof of concept in 2006 named Justin TV. And this was the idea that um, the internet and computers had caught up to where you didn't have you didn't need to have curated content, you could have live content. So we opened that platform up um, and then later on when it became obvious that it was servicing a need um, and that we should grow the platform, we noticed that really the only traction we were getting was gaming content. Hmm. And we immediately noticed that because we're all gamers, of course, and it was really StarCraft that drew our attention. So when it came time to really launch the platform to the greater world, that's when Twitch was born in 2011. And of course, we focused on gaming. Mm -hmm. But what we realized was that the other content on Justin TV was great. The problem was we didn't have a large enough community to enjoy it. So now we're up to almost 200 million active users. There's wow. at least 1 million people on our platform uh, on any second of any day, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they want more, they want shoulder wrap. They wanna know what people that they enjoy watching them play video games or um, talk about you know, podcasts or whatever the case may be. What do they do on their free time? Um, there's also you know, adjacent spheres like anime um, and TV shows that we're interested in, but we're just not interested in consuming it in a passive medium. Mm -hmm. We want that active medium to participate. So we opened up the section called Creative. We launched it with Bob Ross. Oh. Um, the, we worked with the Bob Ross Foundation. Okay. And we put a marathon on. And I believe the first week of Bob Ross, we had almost 20 years worth of viewership on Bob Ross on PBS. And it was because you had like-minded individuals in the chat talking to each other and making it come alive. And we loved Bob Ross because we really felt like he was the first person that tried to engage his audience. Um, he would look directly at the camera and sure. explain why he's putting this happy tree here and this happy cloud and why he's putting these colors in. But he would speak to you directly. He just didn't have the medium to receive feedback in real time and answer questions. And that's what really Twitch brought was this ability for community to chat and make it relevant for them at that second. Since then, we've opened it up to um, really almost anything. We have the NBA G League on. Mm -hmm. We have NFL Thursday nights. We had a um, Saturday Night Live 
marathon, and it was the older Saturday Night Live content, the Eddie Murphy's, the Jim Belushi, where the, the, the comedy might not have been so relevant to our community. And again, we have 200 million strong. Mm-hmm. Our, our average median age is 26 years old that consume between two and two and a half hours of content per day. But you know what? All the traditional media outlets came in and said, what a great experience this was because our Twitch chat was making jokes on the jokes yeah. from some, from Saturday Night Live. So it became this truly engaging experience and it made it relevant for people today, Saturday Night Live from 20 years ago. So um, we thought that was really exciting. We've since done Doctor Who marathons. And that was the one I got really drawn in on was the Doctor Who marathon, yeah, for me. And I right. and the chat exactly as you were saying was very for Doctor Who fans was something that was kind of humorous and also entertaining and educational at the same time because it wasn't just jokes about the show even though it was campy you know 60s BBC television but it was also people getting technical about some of the science thoughts things you not right. backstory you didn't know about the story kind of thing and it's really a place for um, at the least for like-minded individuals to come together um, and share their thoughts, express themselves in real time, get real time feedback. Um, so that's really cool. And last year we had the RNC and DNC um, on Twitch, mm-hmm. and all the pundits um, said that it was a really good discourse with demographics that's not normally involved in politics. Mm-hmm. Um, we had Mark Zuckerberg trials on Capitol Hill. Um, so yeah, we, we've really opened up the platform now because the community is asking us for it. So we're going to do what we're told. Um, the community will always ultimately be the boss, and um, the broadcasters will come on to service that need, and then we'll identify how to make it as appropriate and engaging as possible. Now, um, you, did, you said appropriate and engaging. So yesterday I was part of a meeting in the state of Wisconsin. We're organizing into our high school esports association. And um, one of the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the questions that came up was around uh, toxicity and was around appropriateness of chats and should we do streaming, should we not do streaming? And I think you and I have spoken in the past and I've talked about the concept of the scholar gamer. You've also said that, um, you know, gaming is, is more the medium to a bigger, bigger opportunity that you have to do with esports in your schools. So. Let's let's talk about from the perspective of uh, we want to bring Twitch into our school. We want to broadcast our matches. We've got a chat going on, and there's inappropriate or toxic comments being t- tossed into the chat. Um, again, as an educator, there's going to be a lot of edu- educators who have this question: Is what do I do about that? How do I handle that? Let's say I want to open up this world, but I'm really scared about toxic comments and toxicity in the chat. What do I do about that? So that's a great question, right? So again, what we try to do is provide tools, optional tools, um, and ways to use them that make it as appropriate. You can have a mature rating channel if you want it and you let people know, or you can have it as clean as possible. So the very first step to that is that we have a machine learning moderator bot, right? And Mm -hmm. this this moderator bot, um, you can set scales of sensitivity from one through 10, and you can make it where it calls out anything you might wish to not see in the chat. Um, But our community is quite creative, right? It's very easy to um, game the system, even if you set it at its highest levels of moderation. Um, People will replace letters with numbers, Mm. um, they'll misspell things, and our our moderator bot will learn it and will ban it out at some point. But you always want to complement the moderator bot that we have, which is truly, truly good with human moderators mm. in your chat, right? And you, you, you want to create opportunity for more students as well, right? So having a gaming program and then incorporating some people um, from any other department that might want to be involved and start learning, they could come on and start learning the basics and also keep the chat even cleaner by manually taking care of the chat and catching anything that our moderator bot. So it's very important to complement the tool that we provide, this moderator bot, with human moderators that make sure that's where the you know the toxicity for the most part will be cut out with the moderator bot the human person moderator will make sure that it's appropriate okay i want to kind of shift just a little bit because um i feel that uh uh, you're an excellent person to speak about um kids who don't necessarily feel connected in their schools who maybe 
um, see this as a potential outlet for um, their creativity. Is there any stories or any successes or things that you have heard uh, from students or about students or their experiences, either at the collegiate or high school level, who have turned Twitch into something that becomes a, a positive motivator for their learning? Is there anything? So, that absolutely. You know, um, I want to be as objective as possible. So Orange County um, High School District um, works with UCI. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a great program. They launched a the North American Scholastic Esports Federation, and they work with scholars to come out with articles that address just this thing. So one of the articles that recently came out was a scholarly article on the the positively surrounding Fortnite and the ability to express yourself and experiment. Um, and the scholar likened it to, um, you know, when you used to go outside in an empty lot and play Cowboys and Indians, hmm. um, stuff like that. Um, but they said that this is even more appropriate. There's ways for the, the parents to be involved with what their kids are doing. It's a very simple vernacular. You could learn one of the Fortnite dances, um, <laughs> quite easy to learn. Um, but the point is to, it's it's a easy way for the parents to be involved in this experimental phase, in this creative phase, in this social um, phase of young people's lives and just make sure that, you know, they, every once in a while, you know, when you're broadcasting on Twitch, you don't have to be over your um, child's shoulder. You could be in the next room watching on your cell phone and watching the chat and watching what he's saying in real time and sit and have a talk. If you see, um, him using terminology that you might not wish for, um, or engaging activities that you think is, is not to the best interest of having an open mind and being caring and loving to everybody, mm. right? And you can have these conversations, be like, you know, would, would you like this to happen to you if you were doing X and somebody said one, two, and three to you? How would you feel? I think you can be the leader of your social group. I think you can make it a great community that's warm and welcoming for everybody. And you don't tell people what to do, right? You just sit down and you understand their circumstances. You become a part of it, right? You can speak the vernacular and you can, you, it's a much easier way to be a guiding force, but still encourage um, what they're doing to express themselves and, and, and have that creative outlet and that social experience. Um, and, you know, now with high schools and universities, you know, we have this university challenge that can be applied to high school and the parents can sit and talk about how they can take their specific education and apply it to the business side of it, right? Maybe, you know, charge, you know, $50 a week to be a moderator mm. in your community's Twitch channel. Okay. Um, and then incorporate those values that your parents are not forcing upon you, just explaining to you that there's a better way to think, there's a better way to communicate, there's a better way to stand out from the crowd and be a leader. So that's a, a great example of these articles from the North American Scholastic Esports Federation. Um, lots of great articles. Um, and I have hundreds of examples of students that found their voice and found themselves in their esports programs, applied their particular discipline um, to the esports club, and then graduated and had great cover letters and portfolios. Um, so the young lady that created our Twitch student swag and our Twitch student handbook, um, she now had the ability to go on a cover letter and say, okay, I know as an art student, but I applied my art to our esports program for two years. I also created the Twitch student swag and the Twitch student handbook on contract from Twitch and Amazon. Um, so I've, I've taken art and applied it to the digital medium. Here's my portfolio of which all the esports graphics, my Twitch student swag and my Twitch student handbook was a part of it. And she went and she found work in a traditional media agency that was curious and wanted to be involved in this new digital world in an appropriate way. She, so, so you're saying this was a high school student who did this? No, this was a senior at oh. the University of Illinois. Oh, okay, all right. Um, because the you know the, the thing that we I, I, and I'll share this story with you. Um, I think most surprising to me has been just how pervasive Twitch has become in our society and a lot of people don't even realize it. So for example, um, I was working with one of our students, um, we, we were doing a board presentation um, to the Racine Unified School Board and one of the board members during the presentation made comment that um, he was really excited to hear about esports and he was excited to hear about Twitch being mentioned because his son um, who is uh, in his early 20s um, actually does broadcast games, him playing video games quite a bit, 
and even said he's even got sponsors he's even got sponsorships and it was it was one of those things where it was kind of like you didn't expect to hear a school board member say that uh, you know we fight so much against the stereotypes of what a gamer supposedly is and we know that that those things are not to be true if we're talking about a scholar gamer we're talking about kids who want to do this in positive ways who want to um, engage in positive ways and to hear a school board member say that his own son uses a platform like this and the, and the school board member understood it it was very surprising and it, i think it's important to point that out that you know you said a, a user base of about 200 million people with a million people watching every at, at any one time simultaneously correct mm -hmm. i mean to put that in perspective you're basically talking about you know almost half of the united states as a population would be watch or would be a member of twitch so i mean i know, I know we're talking globally but just trying to put it in, in numbers perspectives it's it's and, very and it's pervasive a, a demographic that traditional linear media is not reaching right 26 years old is the average median age if you look at the average median age for a mlb fan it's 54 years old mm -hmm. and it, um and it's worth noting too you know um, in my generation it was, I can't believe that kid watches so much TV. Why don't you go outside and play? And now I look at my own son who I'll, I'll sit there and wonder, my gosh, why doesn't he watch TV? Yeah, he's watching so much Twitch. It's like, can't you just watch a regular show? You know, you know right. and, and for adults. But we have regular shows on Twitch that it can have that social experience. So he's not just, he or she is not just sitting on the couch consuming content. Again, they're getting that social experience. They're expressing themselves. They're becoming empowered, knowing that their voice is being heard. Yeah, and 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 I mean, you know, if people say, "Well, watching and playing video games is a waste of time," it's still the number one most watched thing in the world. It's it's you know the NFL, and the people will sit there for three and a half to four hours and watch a game. I don't see why the game. If you change the game, why the the there needs to be a stigma placed on it. And as you said, you're creating the opportunity to have a socially connected experience that um, isn't necessarily available directly in in what we watch. So this sounds like the conversations I was having with um, administrators at educational institutions back in 2015. Mm -hmm. Um, and they didn't know what Twitch was, so a vast majority of my conversations would be to explain the platform, um, the industry, the place of the platform in the industry, and what being a broadcaster and being part of the community means. Um, and then we would also have these discussions like, oh, well, you know, if, if um, our kids are watching four hours of TV and three hours of Twitch and doing two hours of that and six hours of this, like there's no time for them to study. But what we've learned is that it's non-additive, right? So um, students and um, this new generation, they're not consuming traditional linear broadcasts. They're not reading newspapers and stuff. So this two and a half hours isn't taken away from anything else. It's, it's the way they're used to consuming media. Mm -hmm. um, so they still have plenty of time to do everything else, especially as administrators start understanding and teach the students how to apply their education to the business of this new digital world. And of course we use Twitch and eSports as the medium, but the skills that you learn um, in a media course, in a business class that has some um, um, digital strategy behind it, this is applicable anywhere when they graduate um, in this new digital world. Yes. So I, I think it's just really a great combination. Again, they love gaming, mm -hmm. obviously, right? They love this medium that they're consuming content in if they can learn now how to apply their specific education and start answering some of these known unknowns in this industry maybe identifying some unknown unknowns and helping us grow this industry and professionalize the in this industry they're going to be doing what they love they're going to be applying their education with passion and vigor and when you do what you love you never work a day in your life and this is what i'm noticing with more and more people is that you know, you and I come from a time where you had a job. The job was to provide an income to feed your family and put a roof over your head. Yes. That's not enough anymore, right? People want to feel content. They want to feel satisfied in the work that they do. The salary comes secondary. And that's a really a, a amazing thought process to go through when you think about, about the opportunities that gaming and live broadcasting and content creation creates for more and more and more people. Um, you know, esports is just like any other business. You need marketers, you need business people, you need managers, you need talent agents, you need journalists, you need um, every spectrum of the education system can be applied to this industry in new and innovative ways. I'm hoping that some of these students, when they look at this university challenge that I put out, 
which again at its core is just an interdisciplinary approach to practically applying education to the business of this new digital world. We're hoping that some of these students will say, wow, you know, we did some amazing work together um, for the esports program. We're doing things nobody else has done. Why are we going to graduate and look for work? Why don't we graduate and start? We've, we've identified something we could contribute. We work well together. Let's graduate and start a business. And we're hoping that business will teach old dogs new tricks. And in this way, this industry will always be innovative, always be exciting, always remain young. And it's it's funny that you just said, you know, when they graduate and you're talking about the university challenge, I've thought long too about, you know, in high school level, we talk about college and career ready. Well, college seems to be the drive for a lot of people. However, the career ready side seems to kind of get left behind. I think they, there's a stigma placed on people who don't go to college right away. And that's, right. and that's an unfair stigma. I would like to think that if a student graduates high school and they have learn to use this platform and this medium in in unique ways in new ways or in ways that are sustaining and they enjoy and they love there's a way that you know why why should they necessarily have to go to college if they feel that this is where they are right now is the place they want to be and they're making a a, a livable happy fulfilling experience doing it i i agree with that statement and um only for one reason. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't in a place when I was younger to be able to go from high school into college. Mm -hmm. I had to go out and get a job and and earn. Um, I had nobody else to depend on but myself. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get to go to college till I was 31 years old myself. But I do think college is an extremely important aspect of one's lives, right? The education is great. It's personal growth, mm -hmm. right? It's the ability to... Um, meet lots of different people from lots of different cultures and be exposed to new experiences. Um, that's why I think college is really important. Um, does it have to be when you're 19 years old? Um, maybe not. Um, it should be absolutely an option. So I like to think with high schools, the work I do with high schools, it prepares them for the next step of their career. If they identify something they could do for a couple of years, you know, gap years are not unheard of. Right. right? Um, and they can get a little bit of experience where when they do go to college, they know exactly what they're doing. Okay, you know, I learned this much business um, while I was in high school working with our high school esports team. I went out and I applied myself to it. Now I know exactly what I want to go to college for and learn. Yeah. Um, and go and, and have that, that quest now to go out and get an MBA so you can go and, and learn the terminology to bring more traditional businesses into this fold. Um, and that might be something that um, they look for. Or, but yeah, you know, we, we want to prepare people um, for this industry. We want to, in high school, I think it's all about uh, preparing them for their college career mm -hmm. whenever, whenever that comes. Um, these colleges with these programs now are more and more looking for high school students um, that know what they're about in this brand new space to come and um, get a scholarship or come attend the college and help the program grow instead of just maintain it. Yeah. Um, so these universities are very, very eager to have talented young high school students come in and contribute right off the bat and have coursework that help them evolve and even have a deeper understanding of how to apply their specific passion and discipline to. And that's, and that's why I think we've seen a lot of the small colleges. I mean, it's not the big schools that are embracing esports at a level that, you know, like they, they embraced football, for example. It's the small colleges who see an opportunity to attract new students who are passionate about what the what they do and what they want to do, um, who ha are are motivated to be uh, part of something great at their schools, very personalized to them, but also great. And you know the other. So I, go ahead. Sorry. I think, that, I think that was true in 2016. As I helped more and more universities, I did notice that it was a lot of private um, universities and right. smaller um, universities, but. I think a lot of administrators are now understanding um, this industry and they understand that gaming is a medium um, to bring passion and vigor to a student's education with real application and real, you're preparing students for next year, mm -hmm. not four years ago. Um, so now bigger and bigger universities, we have official partnerships with the University of Utah, Boise State, Georgia State University, UCI. Um, Berkeley is doing great things. University of Washington is coming on board. I mean, there's great, big, huge schools that um, they're looking beyond the, um, you know, for me, I think there's three major KPIs for an educational institution. What's a KPI? And that's, and that's 
enrollment, okay. life experience survey, and post-graduation employment numbers. I think a lot of these bigger schools don't worry about enrollment. Right. They're really looking to create opportunity for their students, both in life experiences and careers. And it's a digital world now. We're not going to go backwards, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to go more and more. We're going to learn more and more what this digital medium means to people, this digital world means to people. And administrators, at their heart and soul, they want to prepare their students for the future. And, and that's what this is, really. So, again, eSports is just the medium. Um, the Twitch platform is just the medium for that real-world experience that has both financial benefits and cover letter and portfolio building skills built into it inherently. But these skills, when they graduate, again, can be applied to any digital company in any digital industry. Absolutely. Well, with that, I think that's a fantastic way to wrap up this interview. Mark Candela, uh, Candela Garvey, as we also you're known better uh, if where would they be able to get more information you did say twitch.tv slash p slash students what about right. the university challenge um, the university challenge is also found on that portal okay so there's a re resource section that has the handbook which gets you started um, and gives you a big broad um, base of knowledge on what exactly this program is and what knowledge tools tools and support we provide um, there's also a great interview um, it was made by CSL, Collegiate Star League, uh, by a student that really explains the vision of why we've created a program like this. And then right after that is the University Challenge, which is the with the heart and soul of the program. And again, it's the practical application of education, um, interdisciplinary, to the business of this new digital world. So it kind of all flows together and creates this great synergy. You have a great, great broad base of, of how we would work with you. Um, the article goes through the vision of the program, and I think the vision is very important because I want to work with people that believe in that vision, where I'm not working for a university and a university is not working with Twitch. We're working together towards a shared vision with the students, and that vision is to create more and more opportunity to empower young people to come out and contribute with passion and vigor in a meaningful fashion. Um, and that's really what the, the challenge is. It's the heart and soul of the program. Awesome. Uh, and if they wanted to get in touch with you outside of that challenge or outside uh, of Twitch. We have an email yep. um, that goes to my whole team and me, um, and it's just Twitch student, all one word, Twitch student at twitch.tv. That's our email for the program. Perfect. That's also found on the portal as well. So um, we would love to hear from every administrator in high schools and universities mm -hmm. um, and just discuss what could be. Everything's optional with Twitch. Um, I'm more than happy to help in any way I can. I, and, and believe me, everybody, if you're hearing that, he's absolutely correct. He is more than happy to meet with you, talk with you, help you navigate this world. It's always been fantastic working alongside with you and talking with you. Garvey, thank you for being on the podcast. I appreciate it. It was really my pleasure, and I want to thank you again for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. That will do it for this week on the Academy of Esports. I've been your host, James O'Hagan. You may follow me on Twitter, at Jim O'Hagan. That's at J I M. O-H-A-G-A-N, and through the Academy of Esports account, T-A-O Esports. That's spelled T-A-O-E-S-P-O-R-T-S. -E it's a great way to get the latest blog posts, podcast episodes, and news coming out of esports and education. And remember, you can continue your engagement by going to www.taoesports.com. You can also connect through Facebook at www.facebook.com slash T-A-O Esports. Thanks again for listening, and I look forward to our time again next week.